Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about studio gears and equipment, including headphones, microphones, interface, keyboards, and other accessories that you might want to uh, get for your studio. It depends on what you need, of course. But these uh, gears, they work for me, so I want to share with you. Of course, different people may have different preferences, like uh, different brands or different uh, price levels. Uh, even professionals, they sometimes they have like really high end stuff, all the way to very very basic. And as long as they works, it doesn't really matter. I guess uh, depends on what inspires you and what exactly you need, right? So um, there's no right or wrong answers. But if you are looking for some um, references or ideas of what you get, and uh, you can watch this video. And down below, I have some links included so that you can check them out later. So let's talk about headphone first. Uh, what I'm wearing right now is my personal favorite. It's Shure SRH840. Right now, they're only 200 uh, Canadian dollars. I believe before it was like 250 or 300 even, but I don't remember exactly. So it has gone down in price and I find them very comfortable wearing, uh, especially if you are listening to um, recording uh, some vocal. And I think it's uh, my personal favorite. Now, I do have another pair that uh, a lot of people talk about for entry level. Audio-Technica uh, M50X. These are really good um, headphones as well. Very durable. Uh, the sound is okay. Uh, the reason I have more than one pair is not because I keep switching around. It's because I do have people coming over to do uh, voiceover recording and uh, vocalists coming over to sing and stuff like that. So I need to have a pair myself. I need to have some headphones for them to wear. I'm, I have more than that. So um, these are also $200 Canadian and uh, they are very durable and uh, a lot of people recommend them. I've tried them. Uh, personally, I still prefer my Shure, uh, the sound of the Shure uh, headphones. Of course, if you are talking about headphones, sometimes like uh, there are like different favorites like Beats headphone, but I find that they are boosting the bass a little too much. So it really depends on if you are doing, if you are wearing them in the studio or if you're wearing them, you know, outside going running or enjoying music or just want to crank up the beat, right? Crank up the, the bass. So it really, really depends on what the purpose of the headphones uh, to serve you differently, right? So in a studio, I prefer these two. Now, I do have other sets of, uh, of headphones. They have different purpose. Um, they are called reference headphones. I have the first pair of reference headphones I got. AKG Open End Reference Headphones Q701. When I wear them, because they are open, so you can also hear what you can also hear what's going on around you, so that you're not get, getting robbed in your uh, studio, I guess. So when you wear them for a long time because they're open, it's really comfortable. These are not for recording. Um, when, when you're singing, when you're singing to the mic, when you wear them, it's going to give the mic feedback because you can actually hear what's going on inside. So these are just for mixing purpose. But they, I find that they are, they are quite well because when you're mixing, you want to have unbiased signal, right? You don't want to get your bass boost up so that when you're mixing, you, you, it's just not correct, right? So you want to have uh, a pair of reference headphones that you know that give you a flat response rate. Another pair uh, of reference headphones that I have is really really nice Sennheiser HD eight hundred. They are very very nice and comfortable wearing, and uh, I trust the sound of it. So something you might want to think about if you do a lot of mixing. Now, let's talk about uh, something else. Let's talk about microphone. Uh, the one I have here is SE, SE Electronics uh, Z3300A. I don't think they are available now. I've got them for 10 years or more than that. So they sound really nice. So I'm using that for voiceover purpose. I do have other uh, condenser microphone, like smaller ones that I talked about in previous videos. If, if you want to check out microphones and uh, voiceover recording and stuff like that, you can click on that video and uh, I talked about uh, that a little bit more. And I also own uh, um, a blue Kiwi mic and they, they sound really, really great on the vocalist. So uh, I talked about vocal microphone on the previous um, uh, video, so you guys can check that out. And of course, with all the headphones, with all the microphones, you need something to hook up to the computer, right? To connect them. 
I do have a quartet. Um, it supplies phantom power and is really good interface. Uh, there is also like interface like Apollo interface or native instrument. Um, they, they come with an interface as well. So you do need an interface to hook up your microphone, especially uh, condenser microphone to your computer to record. Otherwise, it, it just doesn't work. There is also like an USB microphone that you can plug in for you know podcasting and something simple. But if you are thinking about recording vocalist, I think you do need an interface and a really, really good microphone as well. So uh, signal is everything, right? Now, Besides vocal um, or you know instrument, guitar or drums or whatever, you know I, I don't have that kind of setup in my studio. But uh, if you are looking into that kind of setup, you can check out some other really really good video to uh, help you with that as well. Um, for studio for songwriters, uh, you do need a MIDI keyboard to uh, input your to play your piano or to play your keyboard to input your signal your MIDI information into your DAW. I do have a complete control at uh, S sixty one. It's really it's it's okay. You know, I would prefer eighty eight keys and with fully weighted, so that it feels like a piano. But I don't have that at the moment. My studio is not that big, so uh, right now with S sixty one, it works. So I also included a link, and it's not necessarily a native instrument. You can also have any other keyboard that. Uh, capable of sending MIDI signal out into your computer and then it works as well. Now, um, besides input keyboard, oh, I do have, um, uh, let's talk about the monitors. It depends on your studio room, the size of your uh, of your room. You don't want to have like really really powerful monitor because it's going to be overpowering in your studio. So it depends on the size of your room. For my room, uh, average size, uh, average bedroom size, I have a KRK Rocket Six monitor, and they are they sound okay. And I also have a um, subwoofer monitor to boost up some of the, uh, the bass. You know, when I'm mixing something with bass, I really wanna, I don't wanna overload my two tiny speakers. I wanna have a subwoofer to take over the bass part of it. Now, because of that, I have another microphone. It's the Behringer, Behringer ECM 8000. So this is a reference microphone to make sure your studio setup is fine, you know, uh, give you a flat response rate. More about the uh, studio setup, you can find out, uh, you can browse around the YouTube channels to help you with that. And some uh, channels, they do talk about this uh, reference microphone to uh, how to use it so that, you know, when I'm using, especially for me, uh, when I set up my subwoofer, I don't want it to be overpowering. So when, I, when I'm mixing, when I am, uh, tuning, I don't want to, you know, I want to have a signal that I can trust. So that's the main purpose of that. Now, with all the, um, uh, oh, let's talk about the mixing, right? Uh, mixing, I do have something called fader port. It's not overly pricey. It's okay price with motorized faders. The reason I'm getting that, it's because, oh, pardon me, my, um, my robot vacuum is on. Uh, the reason of um, having that is uh, when you are mixing, you kind of like have to use your mouse to tweak all the faders on your DAW. And also sometimes you want to click on soloing some tracks and then uh, muting some tracks. It's a lot of work for, you know, even keyboard shortcut or, or your mouse to drag around and your eyes are kind of like tiring to search for your cursor. So with a fader port, it's actually, actually you can use your left hand to press buttons and uh, you do your fader uh, instead of using your mouse to drag the fader. After a while, it's really, really tiring. So the fader port can help you with that as well. Something similar to fader port uh, can be a little bit pricey. So I would recommend fader port. Uh, if you want to check it out, you can click the li uh, link down below. And uh, with all these uh, different things connecting to your computer, your MIDI keyboard, your microphones, different microphones, your uh, fader port, your iPhone to you know hook it up to to, uh, to charge to recharge your iPhone or whatever. I do have something like um, uh, fader. Uh, I do have something called the um, USB hub, so that you can connect everything into your uh, your hub, so that you know everything is tidy. And also, if you are using something like iLock, they do come come with a dongle. 
you have to plug it into your computer that's occupying one of your USB slot already, right? So having a hub will solve a lot of problems to connect everything to, to your computer. You may not be using all of them at once, but at least it's all connected. So when you're using, you don't have to unplug and plug it in. Uh, talking about the USB hub, something similar, let me backtrack to headphones. I talked about having people coming over to do recording, right? And I'm wearing a pair of headphones. They are wearing pair, different pairs of headphones. So I have something like a, more like a headphone hub uh, with different knobs to, con uh, to control the volume. So let's say my vocalist want to turn on her headphone. Uh, I don't want to affect my headphone, right? I don't want to go deaf. So with a um, headphone hub that can connect all the different headphones together and independently control your volume. So that is very helpful as well. So I have one of that and uh, I, I'm showing you a picture of that as well. And uh, besides that, um, of course, in a studio, you might have some accessories like music stands and microphone stands to hang your microphone from, from above. So that you know, people when people are looking at the music, or at, at their music, it's not blocking the way. And also some inspiration, decoration like um, salt lamp and uh, LED power to light up your studio. It's just to create an atmosphere for yourself to make it a little bit more inspiring and easier, and people appreciate a little bit of work in your studio decoration as well. Now, something is not decoration is external drive, which I will go over. Um, which I would touch on because uh, if you are using different plugins, not, not necessarily plugins, but sample libraries, they do take up a lot of space in your computer hard drive. So it's, I would say, necessary to get a, a good external hard drive. Some people might have something like um, Lacy. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's really durable. I've had this for years now. Now, the problem with that is uh, it's usually it's not that big. Uh, the storage. I do have something called a Promise Pegasus. Uh, it's really expensive, but uh, it's I have, I have that for years now, and it's, it never breaks down, and the files never get lost and corrupted, or I, I never lose anything so far. So thank God. Uh, you might want to think about getting an external hard drive if you if you are using like sample libraries a lot, and uh, I will talk about a, a little bit about that uh, sample libraries and plugins and all that. So basically, that's my setup, and it's simple, it's not perfect, but it's efficient, it helps me with my workflow, and I just want to share with you guys. I may have some upgrade later on, but uh, at that time, I'll update you guys as well. And um, whatever I talked about, I have included some links down below, you guys can check it out and uh, see if you might need some of that as well, and um, something you may not uh, have think about before, then... Uh, maybe give you some ideas of uh, what else you can get for your studio to make your life easier and uh, that's it for now and thank you for watching i'll see you next time i'll talk about different projects uh, to talk about different libraries uh, plugins and other things as well so other tips i want to share with you and i'll see you guys next time in the next video ciao